Question, have you ever suffered from the dreaded buyer's remorse? Back in a minute. City. My channel name is Jan from New York City Saves Money. There must be an internet connection problem because everything seems to be running a little more slowly today. I'm very sorry about that, but some things just cannot be helped. How's everybody doing today? The question begs, did you ever suffer from the dreaded buyer's remorse? You know, you go to the store or you see that thing online or you see that thing on TV and the way the ad presents itself it seems to fill every single need in your mind. And maybe some of the things do, but maybe most of the things don't. But somehow you feel magically compelled to either pick up that phone, pick up plastic, type something in, or whatever. Or just run to the store and get it. We've all done it. Then you bring it back, and all of a sudden, that same item that you thought a few hours earlier was so needed, you look at it and go, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it has happened to all of us. Or you're still happy about it for one, two, or three days, but you haven't opened it yet. And then a month goes by, you still didn't open it. And then you go, why did I get this? Is it too late for me to even return this? We've all done it. We have all done it. So including me in the past, I've made some purchases like years ago. And I go like, why? Oh, why? <laughs> but it could happen to all of us. What can we do about it? First of all, I think it really important that if we decide to really consider, for example, how long and hard it took us to make that dollar amount. See, if we convert the item into dollar amounts, and then once you arrive at that dollar amount, bring it down to the break it down to the work hours that it costs you to get that thing that you're not even fond of that you don't even look at that's collecting dust don't fear especially for the items that have just been put away in the corner and you never confronted it at least get something back from it what can you do about that my recommendation is to hold a sale have a yard sale or go on one of those marketplace type places craigslist ebay whatever the best one is the direct sale where you don't have to pay any fees out of it, in my opinion. So that's one thing you could do. But a good trick, and I'm telling you, especially for the bunch of newcomers that are here, and welcome, welcome, welcome. If you are new here, thank you so much. And if you've been here for a while, thank you, thank you, thank you. And if you're just dropping by to say hello, hello, hope you come back one day and stick around. This trick has worked for me, and I use this all the time, and I have mentioned this in prior videos that maybe some of you have never seen. Ask yourself this question. Will the earth or the world fall off its axis if I do not make this purchase today? Now, I didn't say never consider it. You could come back to it tomorrow. And a really great tip, especially if you're shopping online. You could put that thing in the cart, if you will, that imaginary cute little cart, put it there, walk away from it for a day or so. Some people say about 24 to 48 hours, a decent amount of time. And then ask yourself, do I really, really need this? Now, recently, I was watching one of those home type of shopping type of networks on TV and the one that begins with letter Q. <laughs> okay. And even though I made the purchase quickly, this was a sale on a household item that I absolutely needed. Absolutely. And what was it? A microfiber, microfiber duster set, you know, the kind with the long extender sticks. I've been needing that for a little while now. I had some, and then they, you know, not that not that brand, another knockoff brand. This one is like pretty much like the real deal type thing. 
and I got it on sale. Yes, there was no hesitation. There was zero doubt in my mind to make that purchase. But it was a quick yes. To be honest with you, and, and Steve, Steve Young from the Steve Young 74 channel can verify this. We were on a personal, we were on a personal, not business chat. We were just, you know, shooting the breeze the other day on the weekend. We were just talking. And then I had that on. I'm looking at it like I'm talking to him. I'm looking at it. I'm looking at the screen going, wait, see, wait. I was like, wait, I got to get this. He pretty looked at me like, what are you talking about? Within like minutes, <laughs> the purchase occurred. And that was not an impulse buy. That was a, a you better get it now with this excellent price buy because this is something you have been looking for and it fills a need. I am not the tallest person in the world. So that item has those wonderful extender sticks. And I got it for a really great price. It was below 30 bucks. You know, that reminds me of a recent video that I uploaded like last week about the difference $30 can make a week. Think about that. I just realized that there's kind of like a connection there without even thinking about this. This item was less than $30. It was a needed item. Like uh, I think the video was called, uh, what's the big deal about having an extra $30 a week? Something to that effect. I'll hook it up. I'll try to remember to hook it up in the description box below. And people take everything like so for granted. Ah, oh, what's $30? Well, by having that $30 extra, I made the decision. I am a frugal person. I live the frugal person lifestyle. I make choices based on value. This is very important to me, making decisions based on value. Am I going to get value from that purchase? Now, let's get back to impulse shopping for a minute. There's a big difference. Even though I made a quick decision, I knew already from weeks on end that I needed that item. So that's different. I just happened to bag the deal. Is there a difference between bagging the deal and impulse shopping? I think there is. Because sometimes people shop impulsively and at the end of the day, that is the item that's going to end up in the corner. That is the subscription that's going to keep rolling and rolling and rolling. The packages come in every single week, uh, excuse me, month. And it, it just jumps up to, to the hilt with dust on it. And you don't even know what to do with it other than uh, let's think about this one. Don't think too long canceling it. Because <laughs> as you know, I mentioned this in the past. I you know, belong to one of those coffee um, subscription companies. There was more coffee than the both of us to drink. I, I couldn't. I, I, at that time, I, we couldn't we couldn't handle it. So the coffee was coming in too much, and we even tried to change flavors. I couldn't even look at a certain flavor of coffee anymore. The thought of the name of that that uh, flavor of coffee to this minute makes me like a little wretchy because it was just too much. All right, so examine your shopping habits. Examine your shopping habits because you may be saving a lot of money or not spending a lot of money in your future and have that extra in your pocket. There you go. Well, I hope that this helps someone today. I really, really do. And I'm going to wish everybody an amazing, fantastic day. And I'm looking for my outro. So sorry. Have an amazing, fantastic day. Let's see what happens when I want to end the broadcast. <laughs>